Yeah, I don't know. All right, what was the thing you just said? Swim run, swim run. Swim run world championships. I did it for Boundless. On a new Boundless. 26 islands, 65 kilometers of running, 10 kilometers of swimming. One of the toughest races with even tougher rules. You can't continue running. Please, it's not fair. A new episode of Boundless, Tuesday at 10 on Esquire Network. I'm going back. 39 miles of running, 6 miles of swimming through the Swedish archipelago. Okay, now here's what's really funny about that, Hunter, is I remember wanting to talk to you about that, and we were not the friends that we are now, and I was like, oh, man, I got to watch this and, like, learn what Hunter did. And so, like, you sent me an episode of Boundless. Yeah. Do you remember that? No. Welcome to Attilo, the Swim One World Championship. It's savage. Okay, so what I'm looking at is when you do a swim run, you wear these, like, hand paddles? Is that a is that a – is that a vape thing? What are you doing? It's crack cocaine. What the fuck is that? It's called Boa. It's a sodium spray for athletes. Boa. Dude, it's you should get one Boa. of these. You should get one of these things. If you just sit at the desk and you're like doing work. Yeah. I used to huff those when I was a kid. No surprise. Yep. And you just hit this and it's like the biggest boost. You're like, whoo. Yeah. What are we going to do now? It's awesome. So talk to me about Swim Run because I've seen a few of these and I've tried to get a couple to advertise with us because I know it would be interesting to the OCR audience who's always looking for the next challenge. Talk about these these hand paddles and the foot paddle and the foot middle. Talk to me, Hunter. Well, this is the pinnacle, this one event, obviously for the distance involved, but it's just an exchange. Uh, best of- in, in the Velta, best in the world. <laughs> Number one. Vested in Munchen. I'm vested in Munchen. Numero one, numero one, best in the <laughs> Yeah. It's crazy. I mean, it's one of the coolest events in the entire world. You start in Stockholm. They put you on like a boat, take you out to one of these little islands, and you stay in all these tiny little homes, and you wake up the next morning early in the morning, and then you go – and you basically – there's 56 exchanges or 52 exchanges of swimming and then getting an island and running and swimming and running and swimming. Longest run is about a half marathon. Longest swim is 1,800 meters. Shortest run is like 200 meters. Shortest swim is like 50 to 100 meters. Like it's – you know, it's just you're like hopping off at, in and at islands. It's nuts. And I just figure like I'm looking at taking a step back from like the constant – uh go to a Spartan race, go to a high rocks, go to a deck of fit. Like every single weekend, I'm like, I'm tired of running in circles and pulling on skiers and pushing. Do you know these guys? Do you know Lars? No, but I'm going to fuck them up. Do you know Susie and, and, and and this bald guy? I'm going to fuck these dudes up. I love it. I love it. Yeah. I mean, can we, can we say something? Let's say something. Okay. Okay, I want to do a little, let's, that guy tried to fuck on me. You fuck on me. This guy was pretty dope. So I'm watching this video, and you're basically trail running. Now you're running through water, um, et cetera. Um, let's say something about the OCR athlete, okay? People are like, oh, when are the, when are the best athletes going to start coming to OCR, right? Like, oh, we're waiting for these, like, Olympians that ever show up. How about wherever we show up, we dominate? How about look at what Hunter and Albin – I just said Hunter. Hunter – uh, and Ryan and Albin and Lindsay and Rhea showing up to all these other disciplines and just like immediately making the podium, right? Yeah. Stay with me here. You're looking at stuff. Come, come back to me. I'm looking at you on the screen. Oh, okay. Well, that's trippy to me. But you know what I'm saying? Like we- the people that we've been breeding, right? The training these people are doing are like, oh, I'm just gonna Lindsay. Like I'm just gonna show up to one of these and like, oh, I'm on the podium. You, you know what I mean? Albin's like top impressive. three top three best trail runners in the world right now and uh at least mountaineering like sky runners and atkins like handily shows up at almost any long distance excursion and just crushes it Lindsay goes like the hardest cross-country skiing events and crushes it there there's some freaks in this sport i feel like the sport that i feel like I think Atkins could dominate one of those last man standing events because he's, you know, he's got the endurance, but he's, the, it's all mental, as you know. Once you hit a day, it's mental. And I think he would just crush anybody's spirit because they'd be like, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I think, I think you could do if you went that way, but you weren't, you don't like him that long anymore, as they say. Yeah. But sure I think he could crush. Yeah. I think, I, I hope Atkins starts to kind of go out into the, 
the bigger expanse of the world and get a little bit out of OCR and just goes and dominate some of the bigger things. Like I want to do stuff like Badwater 135. I think Atkins could go to almost any of those races. Like everyone's like, oh, the Bark and the Marathon's so hard. Atkins could literally chew that up. You would eat it alive. Well, yeah, and listen, Lindsay, everybody's giving Lindsay a hard time about not retiring. Listen, she wasn't going to do OCR this year. She wasn't. She was going to do a couple of the races. But then guess what? One of the ones she has to do is in Canada, so she's going to do that one. And then the championship's in Canada, so she's going to do that one. So next year, we probably won't see her as many. But when you've dominated by minutes, like Lindsay has dominated four years and has won every title there is to win multiple times, I don't – I don't. Uh, it's like, okay, I'm moving on, right? Ryan, Ryan still can, you know, hasn't beaten everybody over and over and over again. He's still the goat, right? Yeah. But you know what I'm saying? There's still room for him to fuck around and do that. So I can see why he's not quite done. Um, but Lindsay, I totally get it. She's like, yeah, I've, I've won the world championship 10 times. What do I, what do I have left to prove? She's just going to start a bakery and just, you know, probably pop out some chitlins. And for years, it was by a lot until Nicole, and and Annie and Emma came along. It was like by minutes and minutes and minutes. Anna Duba. Uh, Annie. <laughs> what a great name, right? Yeah. Okay, so you're gonna do some swim run. Okay. Yeah. What yeah. else? What after that? Oh, is that it? We don't want to go any further than that with you because you get crazy. I think, you're like, right? I, I I mean, I always have really ambitious goals and stuff, and there's things that I want to do, and then all of a sudden, if I, it, I hope people don't hold like a gun into my head about this stuff. If I lose inspiration for it, I just don't want to do it. And it's tough. Like I don't really, I, I don't try to put too much on my plate, but I often do. But um, the next thing that I think I'll be excited about, and I'm going to start training for loosely and see how it feels is there's this workout called Chad, um, which is commemorating a special forces guy who passed away. I'll give obviously more details on the exact um, thing that they're trying to support, but in my mind, I really do love these hero workouts. I love what they stand for. I love the people that they support. And I did Murph a couple of years ago. And now there's the Chad one. It's just basic thousand box step ups with a 45 pound ruck on a 20, 20 inch box for time. And I'm just going to go up, down, up, down, up, down. And that should probably happen in the fall. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing how, uh, how how many people get behind those things. I was just thinking about it loosely, and I was like, "Hey guys, I'm thinking about doing this." I post it, and just everyone's just like, "Ah, this is awesome!" So I was like, "Who, okay. who does this look like to you? Who does this look like to you?" Uh, shit, Robert Nero. <laughs> so all you have to do is kind of frown, and you look like Robert De Niro. You, you insulted him a little bit. You insulted him a little, little bit. Who do I insult? Drinks are on. The house. No, 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 no. You insulted him a little bit. You got a little out of order yourself. No, I didn't Sorry. insult him. I didn't insult him. him a little bit. No, no I didn't no. insult nobody. Give us a drink. Give us a drink. Okay. Oh, is that a quote from a movie? I thought you were saying I insulted somebody. No, no, that's uh, that's uh, Goodfellas. Come on, man. I got to get better at my movies again. I, I've been falling off. I'm sorry. Um. So we've moved on from Murph. Murph was fun for a couple of years. Boom. We're on to the on to the next. Yeah, I think so. But I think. I, I, I think people so that's what people don't I think that's what people don't understand is is when you when you make uh bold statements and you make a lot of bold statements, then I guess then people get like, oh well he said that now he's doing something else. But I get it, dude. I get not being inspired anymore to to not want to necessarily do it. Yeah, like it, I'm a big believer in like one hundred percent focus. And like every single time I don't give one hundred percent focus, I don't get the outcome that I want. And a lot of time I'm like, yeah, let's do this thing. And then I'll sit there with it. And, and like, I was really ready to do that marathon and I got hurt. And I'm now sitting here thinking about it. And like, I'm supposed to start my upswing for the marathon again. It was in my planning. And I was like, I don't know if I really want to go through that again. Like, I don't want to get hurt. I don't want to, I don't want to feel that way again. And there's a couple things I'd rather do like swim run world championships. I'm like, that sounds fucking awesome. I want to go back to Sweden. I want to go see the world again. It's going to be amazing it's more exciting to so me do than you have marathon. to team it up though do you have to partner or like you and katie doing it or what's happening katie and katie and i are going to do it so it's like a it's like a is it a specific category is it like mixed doubles or we're, we're, we're mixed doubles it's a pretty competitive one you know but anybody can get it but anybody can sign female. no the spot you had to qualify i i know the founder of the company uh and i was just like hey listen i know that they have celebrity spots like meaning like you know whether you're an athlete right. or press 
Like they had like some princess there at one point when we were there. And I was like, wow. And she just wanted to do it. So I was like, Hey, I'm interested in doing this. We do not have time to qualify because like, we can't just like fly over to Europe and together and randomly do a race. Like we don't have the time. If you have the slot, please let me know. Oh, and so, so if a world-class athlete wants to do your event, you don't think you should make them fly 80 time zones to run a worthless uh, ultra beast to qualify and then go to Iceland. That's not what they're doing. Yeah. Remember, remember when they did that to Albin? Remember when Spartan did that to Albin? Yeah. Cause, yeah. cause that was the rule. I really, you know, I don't care anymore. I'm just going to say that I really want the best for Spartan race because it built me the career that I have and it created so many amazing friends. It's our friendship. It's so many other people's friendship. Like I don't want to see it burned down because it's something that's so much a pillar of my life. But I will say with all honesty, there are so many people in that company that have just made so many poor decisions to help support the community and create a really just long, like create longevity and security in a sport. And they just don't seem to fucking understand it. They just don't like, I don't understand how you could continuously fuck it up as often as they do. I will give you a perfect example that just happened and it's public. So I can say it. Okay. It's public. It's on Facebook right now. Okay. Yeah. And by the way, I'm exactly the same position. I just did a video bitching about the stupid wall street journal article, but I also said, we need Spartan. Okay. Industry doesn't exist. Okay. OCR as an industry goes away without yeah. Spartan. So yeah. I need it to be around and I've made a million friendships and Joe DeSena is a huge part of my life for that reason. Right. But this woman posted, okay, perfectly good thing. Uh, same obstacles over and over, same venues over and over. I'm a little bored. I, I like other obstacle races that provide more for me. And the response from a Spartan employee was, why don't you try La Ruta or the death race? Meaning just trying to put them in something that's totally ridiculous. So the example I gave was you come to my restaurant, right? And I have a hamburger place, right? What I'm supposed to do is give you an amazing hamburger. And I yep. tell you that uh, the lettuce was old and the tomato was a little whatever. And it's not really how they cooked it rare instead of well done. We're not going to make it better. Go do something else. And you come run out in the kitchen and you go, dude, I, I know you didn't like your burger, but I have a pizza place in Peru that you should check out. Yeah. Like well, the most tone deaf, ridiculous, <laughs> which I know you can't use that word anymore. That's an honest employee. That's an honest answer from a Spartan employee. Try La Ruta or the death race. Two things that have zero to fucking do with an obstacle race. Like a normal human answer, a normal human could have been equally as like PR sounding, but at least have a fucking clue and in touch with the community, such as, I'm sorry you don't like it. Our, our obstacles aren't really, we don't really try to have the most original obstacles. We prefer to focus on X, Y, and Z. And we love for you to try maybe this venue and we'll give you a free race in Hawaii. I don't know, something, right? Yep. That's, that's how you talk to a customer. Sounds like you have to Spartan up and try Death Race if you want a new challenge. Yeah. A fucking break. I remember when we oh, went that's to... Part, that's, that, that's the other thing that fired me up today, by the way. That So I remember when Tough Mudder started to fall apart. In 2018, I went to go do TMX in a park in out in northern Miami. And they had the regular Tough Mudder, the 5K, the 5 mile, the 10 I was mile. there. I was there. Do you remember that course? It was basically like a field with like a couple, like, you know, basically two by fours and planks for people. It to was the worst. Over. It was the worst tough mutter course I've ever done. And one of the worst tough, one of the worst obstacle races I've ever done. Exactly. And I went and I had such a good time at the most recent Spartan race I went to in Northern California, like middle California slow, but it felt exactly the same, exactly the same. It was like, Run a really long ways. You're going through the woods. Oh, here's a two by four. Watch out. <laughs> like, <laughs> and I was like, shoot, man. I don't know. They, they're, they're, I hope they hear this. Like I called Steve Hammond yesterday and I was like, listen, man, you got to take, you got to take control of the narrative, brother. You got to take control of the narrative because what's happening is the community when you guys get done with a race, you don't have a narrative beforehand, during, or after. And then you allow, you put it in the hands of the people that are disgruntled and they're just 
bashing you guys on the internet. Tell them what they're going to experience at this race. Tell them what's special when they get there. Tell them why it was special what they did and what's going to happen at the next one. Get on there. Be a source of inspiration to get people to the next one and help tweak this thing to kind of find a better path back to its, its growth again. So I don't know. It's tough to say this stuff out loud, but um, fucking A, I'll keep on showing up. Hey, it's George Stephanopoulos. Thanks so much for watching the ABC News channel. Be sure to click on our other videos over here. And uh, be sure to stick with ACDBC News for more information.